Tonight, our first four contenders will take the lonely walk to this black chair. What unites them is they all want to become the nation's mastermind. What will divide them is their ability, when they're sitting in the chair, to remember an awful lot of stuff under an awful lot of pressure. But there can be only one champion. This is Mastermind. Our first contender tonight is Chris Cummins, a university lecturer from Edinburgh. His specialist subject, Paul Simon. Caris Hughes is a communications officer from Glasgow. She's answering questions on the films of Hayao Miyazaki. Sarah Stewart's a foundation director from Bristol. She's answering questions on the Grand Duchess Olga Alexandrovna, the sister of the last Tsar. And our final contender, James Hogg, a charity membership officer from Norfolk. He's answering questions on the poet John Donne. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to Mastermind with me, John Humphreys. Tonight's contenders will put their knowledge to the test and take the first step towards the grand final, where they could win this lovely glass bowl and the title of Mastermind. They will answer two minutes of questions on their special subject tonight and then two and a half minutes on general knowledge. So let's get on with it and ask our first contender to join us, please. And your name is? Chris Cummins. Your occupation? University lecturer. And your chosen subject? Paul Simon. Paul Simon in two minutes, starting now. Under what name did Paul Simon and Art Garfunkel release their first hit single, Hey Schoolgirl, in 1957? Tom and Jerry. Yep. Which comic actor appears in the video for the single, You Can Call Me Al? Chevy Chase. Yep. What is the title of the Paul Simon song performed under the name of Jerry Landis that reached the American Top 100 in 1963? The Lone Teen Ranger. Yep. Simon and Garfunkel teamed up with another singer to record a cover of Sam Cooke's What a Wonderful World that was released in 1978. Who was the singer? James Taylor. Yes. Simon joined a Jewish fraternity at Queen's College in New York and produced and wrote skits for its contributions to Queen's annual stage shows. Which fraternity? Alpha Epsilon Pi. Yes. What was the name of Simon's second solo album? It was released in 1973. There goes Rhyming Simon. Correct. Which keyboard player was in Simon's band in the film One Trick Pony and on the tour to promote the album? Richard T. Yep. Which other act appeared with Simon and Garfunkel on their 2003 to 2004 world tour? They performed some songs by themselves and one with Simon and Garfunkel. The Everly Brothers. Yes. When Simon spent some time in Paris in 1963, he met an Englishman who ran a folk club in Brentwood in Essex, where he later had a residency. What was his name? David McCausland. Yep. Simon had an on-off relationship for more than 10 years with an actress, although their marriage, when it came, lasted less than a year. Which actress? Carrie Fisher. Yes. What is the opening track on both The Rhythm of the Saints and Paul Simon's concert in the park? The Obvious Child. Yep. In 1999, he toured with Bob Dylan, alternating as to which of them should head the bill. At most concerts, they sang four songs together, including Dylan's Knocking on Heaven's Door and a Paul Simon song, which was... Sound of Silence? Yes. What song, released in April 2016, was the lead single taken from the album Stranger to Stranger? Wristband. Yes. Which track on Bridge Over Troubled Water album was the B-side to The Boxer, which reached the top ten in both the UK and America? Bye Bye Love. Oh, what a shame. What a shame. It was perfect up until then. It was Baby Driver. Nonetheless, you have scored 13 points. <laughs> you. And our next contender, please. And your name is? Karis Hughes. Your occupation? Communications officer. And your chosen subject? The feature films of Hayao Miyazaki. In two minutes, starting now, which film directed by Hayao Miyazaki won the Academy Award for Best Animated Feature in 2003? 
Spirited Away. Yep. Miyazaki said that one of his principal inspirations for his 2008 film Ponyo was a Hans Christian Andersen story. Which one? The Little Mermaid. Yep. Which composer has written the soundtrack for every one of Miyazaki's films from Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind onwards? Joe Hisaishi. Yes. In my neighbour Totoro, what means of transport does the forest spirit Totoro summon to help Satsuki search for her missing sister Mai? A cat bus. Yep. Which American actor provides the voices of Louis in Castle in the Sky and Hattori in The Wind Rises in the English language version of the films? Uh, Joseph Gordon Levitt? No, Mandy Patinkin. Porco Rosso pirates launch a concerted attack against a cruise ship, which then launches two aircraft in a vain attempt to try and drive them off. Which cruise ship? Pat. What is the name of the Red Elk, written by Prince Ashitaka in Princess Mononoke? Yako. Yes. Miyazaki's 2004 film Howl's Moving Castle was based on the fantasy novel of the same name by which British author? Diana Wynne-Jones. Yes. In The Wind Rises, Jiro Horikoshi helps Naoko reach her home after she has been hurt during an earthquake. In which district of Tokyo does she live? Oh, pass. What is the name of the talking cat that accompanies Kiki on her travels after she leaves home in order to start her training as a witch in Kiki's delivery service? Gigi. Yep. What human name had been given by her father, Fujimoto, to the fish called Ponyo, who has eaten human food and tasted human blood and now wants to take human form? Brunhilde. Yes. In Laputa Castle in the Sky, Shieta's crystal necklace is made from a rare element that is found in the rocks of the small mining town where she fell to earth. What element? Ethereum. Yes. What species is the supposedly vicious creature Teto? It was given to Nausicaa as a pet by Lord Yupa in Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. Fox squirrel. Yes, in Ponyo, Suzuki makes a model of his father's ship and gives it to Toki at the senior's centre. What is the name of the ship? Pass. Well, I can tell you because you're out of time. It was Kogonai Maru. Uh, you had two more passes. In The Wind Rises, Jiro Horikoshi lives in the Ueno district and uh, the name of the cruise ship was the Queen of the Mediterranean. You have scored, Karis, ten points. And our next contender, please. And your name is? Sarah Stewart. Your occupation? Foundation Director. And your chosen subject? The Grand Duchess Olga Alexandrovna. In two minutes, starting now, the Grand Duchess was born in Russia in 1882 and was the youngest daughter of Tsar Alexander III. What was the name of her English nanny whom Olga called Nana? Mrs Franklin. Yes. In October 1888, the six-year-old Olga was travelling by train with the royal family when it derailed just outside which town? Borky. Yes. Olga and her family were with her father, Tsar Alexander III, when he died in November 1894 at which palace? Levadia. Yes. Olga met her second husband, Nikolai Kolikovsky, in 1903 when he was an officer in which Russian cavalry regiment? The Blue Cuirassiers. Yes. Olga and several members of her family were first put under house arrest in 1917 after the abdication of Tsar Nicholas II when they were at Grand Duke Alexander's Crimean estate near Yalta. Which estate? Aitadol. Yes. Which infamous lay preacher and healer did Olga reputedly first meet in 1907 when he was with Tsar Nicholas's children in their nurseries? Rasputin. Yes. What was the name of Olga's first son, born in 1917? He was named after Saint. Tihon. Yes. In which Cossack town in the Caucasus was Olga's second son, Guri, born after she left the Crimea in 1919 to escape the Bolshevik forces? Nova Rossisk. Nova Minskaya. Olga and her family reached Denmark in 1920. What was the name of the maid who arrived from St. Petersburg months later with Olga's jewels sewn into her clothes? Minka. Yes, Emilio Tenso. At which Berlin nursing home in 1925 did Olga meet a patient who called herself Mrs. Tchaikovsky and claimed to be her niece Anastasia? Anna Anderson. Momsen. What was the name of the large farm that Olga bought and moved into with her family in 1932 in the Danish town of Ballerup near Copenhagen? Nussminder. Yes. In which town did Olga work as a nurse at a Red Cross hospital when the First World War broke out in August 1914? Her own Aktirsky Hussar regiment was stationed there. Rovno. Yes. In 1948, Olga and her family fled Denmark for Canada because of pressure put on the Danish government by the Soviet Union. They first stayed at a royal palace in England. Which one? Hampton Court. Hampton Court is correct. No passes, Sarah. You have scored 11 points. <laughs> Ah.
And our final contender, please. And your name is? James Hogg. Your occupation? Charity membership officer. And your chosen subject? The life and poetry of John Donne. John Donne in two minutes. Here we go. Donne was an English poet and became the Dean of St Paul's in 1621. To which of the Inns of Court was he admitted in 1592 after he completed his preliminary studies in Thavies Inn? Lincoln's Inn. Yes. What was the name of Donne's younger brother who was arrested for harbouring the Catholic priest William Harrington and died of the plague in Newgate Prison in 1593? Henry. Yep. Dunn married his wife Anne in secret in 1601 because her father, Sir George, would have disapproved. What was her maiden name? Moore. Yes. Dunn was ordained by the Bishop of London in the chapel of the Bishop's Palace beside St Paul's Cathedral in January 1615. What was the Bishop's name? Pass. When Dunn took holy orders, he changed his seal from a sheaf of snakes to a device showing what? Pass. What is the title of Dunn's work of 1610 that's dedicated to King James I and VI, in which he argues that Catholics should and must take the oath of allegiance to the crown? Pseudo martyr. Yep. Which poem begins blasted with sighs and surrounded with tears? Hither I come to seek the spring. Pass. What was the name of the parish in Bedfordshire that was presented to Dunn by the Earl of Kent after he became Dean of St Paul's in 1621? Dunstan. Blenheim. Under what title was Dunn's last sermon published? Many thought it was intended to be his own funeral sermon. Death's Duel. Yes. In Dunn's poem, The Will, to which mythological giant does he say he bequeaths his eyes as long as they can still see? Cyclops. Argus. What is the title of Dunn's poem that is an affectionate rewriting of Marlowe's The Passionate Shepherd to his love? It has the same opening line, Come live with me and be my love. The Bait. Yes. What is the title of the poem that opens, When I die, last, and dear, I die as often as from thee I go? The Rising. The Legacy. In which London borough did Dunn preach his earliest surviving sermon in April 1615, either at the palace or the parish church? Whitehall. Greenwich. And your time is up. You have um, three passes. The poem that begins, blasted with sighs and surrounded with tears, at Twickenham Garden. When Dunn took holy orders, he changed his seal from a sheaf of snakes to Christ crucified on an anchor. And he was ordained by the Bishop of London, who was John King. You have scored, James, six points. <laughs> so that's the uh, end of the first round. Let's have a look at the scores. In fourth place, six points, James. Third place, 10 points, Caris, second place, 11 points, Sarah, first place, 13 points, Chris. <laughs> so it is the general knowledge round now, and if there's a tie at the end of it, then the number of passes is taken into account, and the person with the fewer passes is the winner, and if they're tied on passes as well, there has to be a tie break. So let's get on with it and ask James to join us again, please. And um, there's an awful lot to know about John Dunn, isn't there? Hmm. Yeah, he was around a long time. Anyway, two and a half minutes for general knowledge, so loads of time to uh, catch up and overtake the field. Here we go. The name of which large bee comes from the loud humming noise it makes when it flies? Bumblebee. Yep, in 1992, which historical figure was played on film by George Corofas, Gerard Depardieu and Jim Dale? Serrano de Bergerac. Christopher Columbus, what cocktail consisting of rum, cola and a slice of lime is said to have got its name in around 1900 at the end of the Spanish-American War? Cuba Libre. Yes. The Gnome, Tuileries and Cattle are among Mussorgsky's ten musical movements that commemorate his friend, the painter Victor Hartmann. By what title are they collectively known? Pictures and exhibition. Yes. What colour forms the outermost ring of the primary arc of a rainbow? Red. Yes. What is the relationship between the country singers Loretta Lynn and Crystal Gale? Cousins. They're sisters. Which American designer introduced a prairie look in the late 1970s that featured flounced white petticoats underneath denim skirts? Pass. In which Commonwealth country are the Great and Lesser Slave Lakes? Canada. Yes. Which African antelopes with ox-like heads and horns are known for their annual migrations in huge herds during the dry season? Wildebeest? Yes. In grammar, what name is given to the three dots that denote the omission of one or more words that are not necessary? 
Pass. In the 1995 Rugby World Cup final, which country beat New Zealand by 15 points to 12? All 15 points were scored by Joel Sransky. South Africa. Yes. Which cathedral city is the county town of West Sussex? Guildford. Chichester. Which American president who was born in Denison, Texas in October 1890 was the first person born in that state to hold the office? Pass. In the stories by P.L. Travers, Mary Poppins tells her charges that she will stay until what changes? Pass. What is the name of the mythical island mentioned in two of Plato's dialogues that was a powerful kingdom before it was overwhelmed by the sea? Atlantis. Yes. Counselling for Toads, a Psychological Adventure by Robert de Bord, first published in 1998, is a belated follow-up to which children's classic story? Pass. What is the name of Samantha Stevens' mother, played by Agnes Moorhead, in the television series Bewitched? Dorothy. Endora. And you have uh, five passes altogether. Counselling for Toads, that was a follow-up to The Wind in the Willows. And talking of wind, Mary Poppins told the charges she'd stay until the wind changes direction. Dwight D. Eisenhower was born in Denison, Texas, in... Uh, October 1890. In Grammar, the Three Dots, that's the ellipsis. And it was Ralph Lauren who introduced that uh, prairie look in the late 1970s. Your total now, James, is 14 points. <laughs> and now, Karis, again, please. And uh, you start out, Karis, with 10 points. And you have two and a half minutes of general knowledge questions beginning now. Which sport takes place in an arena called a velodrome? Cycling. Yep. By what name is the salad onion, scallion or green onion better known in Britain? Spring onion. Yep. The chalumeau was a forerunner of a woodwind instrument widely used in both classical music and jazz. Which instrument? Clarinet. Yep. The electronic rock groups Kraftwerk and Tangerine Dream come from which country? Germany. Yep. What name derived from the Greek for stone and writing is given to the method of printing from a design drawn with a greasy ink or crayon onto a stone, metal or plastic surface? Etching. Lithography. The director Cameron Crowe won an Oscar for Best Screenplay for a 2000 film about a teenage reporter who covers the fictional rock band Stillwater. What's the film called? Almost Famous. Yes. Who became Britain's most successful Olympic track and field athlete when he retained his 5,000 and 10,000 metres titles at the Rio Olympics? Mo Farah? Yep. In which town on the Thames were seven Saxon kings crowned in the 10th century? Pass. To which bodily function does the adjective peptic specifically refer? Stomach. Digestion. The French king, Henry IV, is credited with saying on his conversion to Roman Catholicism after his accession to the throne that Paris was well worth what? Oh, pass. What is the title of Andrew Michael Hurley's gothic horror story set on a desolate part of the Lancashire coast? Uh, no, pass. Who took the title Lord Protector of England, Scotland and Ireland in 1653? Oliver Cromwell. Yes, in 1986, which film star successfully ran for Mayor of Carmel in California after promising to overturn the ban on eating ice cream on the town sidewalks? Clint Eastwood. Yes. What is the common name for Baleen, the horny bristles that hang down from the upper jaw of toothless whales? It was once important in the production of corsets. Whalebone. Well Wellborn, yeah. What is the name of the media magnate born in 1931 who was educated at Geelong Grammar School, a prestigious Australian boarding school? Rupert Murdoch. Yes, the capital city of which African country was known as Salisbury until 1982 when it changed its name to Harare after the country gained independence? Zimbabwe. Yep. Which deadpan comedian won the first series of Celebrity Big Brother in 2001? Jack D. Yep. In which London borough is the parliamentary constituency represented by Jeremy Corbyn since 1983? It's regarded as the home of champagne socialists. Islington. Yep. Which religious figure's birth is celebrated in Japan on the 8th of April at the festival popularly known as Hana Matsuri or Flower Festival? I should know that and I don't pass. Well, I can tell you it was Buddha. And your other pass is The Loney is the title of uh, Hurley's Gothic story about a desolate part of the Lancashire coast. The French King Henry IV said Paris was well worth a mass. And all those kings, Saxon kings, were crowned at, appropriately, Kingston-upon-Thames. 
You now have, however, a total carries of 23 points. <laughs> and now Sarah again, please. And uh, you start out, Sarah, with 11 points. The score, as you have just heard, is 23. Let's see if you can beat that. Here we go. What is the name of Superman's alter ego who works as a reporter for the Daily Planet? Clark Kent. Yep. Which world snooker champion in the 1980s had a reputation for being boring? He shook this off when he DJed for an electronic music set at Glastonbury Music Festival in 2016. Steve Davis. Yes. What German word is used to describe objects of art or fashion that are felt to be characterised by worthless pretentiousness or vulgarity? No idea. Pass. Which actress's breakthrough role was as Ron Glum's fiancée F in the radio series Take It From Here? Clark. June Whitfield. The Churchill barriers were built during the Second World War to link islands in the Orkneys and protect which naval anchorage? Scarpa Flow. Yes. In the opera by Beethoven, under what name does Leonora disguise herself as a young man to find out what has happened to her husband, Floristan? Willem. Fidelio. In which country is the city and seaport of Archangel, whose name comes from a monastery founded there dedicated to St. Michael? Russia. Yes. What was the name of the 18th century novelist and clergyman who ministered in Sutton-on-the-Forest, Stillington and Coxwell in North Yorkshire? Mm. Pass. Which 1985 film featured Huey Lewis and the News singing The Power of Love? Oh, flash dance. Back to the future. The greater or common and the lesser or Darwins are the two species of a large flightless bird native to South America. Which bird? Penguin. The rear. Which primary colour has shades called cobalt and Prussian? Blue. Yes. What French term is used to describe a dish topped with breadcrumbs or grated cheese that forms a crust when it's cooked in the oven or browned under a grill? Gratiné. Yes, oh, gratin. Which singer plays the title role of Susan in the 1985 film Desperately Seeking Susan? Madonna. Yes. What title for a Hindu spiritual leader comes from the Sanskrit for dignified or venerable? It's also applied to the founders of Sikhism. Guru. Yes. In which John le Carre novel does a British diplomat investigate the murder of his political activist wife in northern Kenya? It was made into a film starring Ralph Fiennes and Rachel Weitz. The Constant Gardener. Yes. Who designed the four bronze lions at the base of Nelson's Column in Trafalgar Square, unveiled in 1867? Edward Lanzier. Yes. How long does a dog watch last on board ship? Four hours. Ah, it's two hours. Oh. Yeah, I know. Four hours is... Well, two dog watches, mm. isn't it? Like <laughs> uh, you had two passes. Lauren Stern was that 18th century mm. novelist. And um, something that's pretty worthless or vulgar is known as kitsch. Oh. I know, I know. Sarah, those two passes, you've scored 21 points. Thank you. <laughs> and finally, Chris again, please. And you start out with 13 points, Chris, and 23 is still the score to beat. So, here we go. In which county is the upland region of Dartmoor and the coastal town of Torquay? Devon. Yep. Which 1927 film starring Al Jolson was the first major feature-length Hollywood film with synchronised speech and songs? The Jazz Singer. Yes. What was the first name of Rembrandt's wife who featured in a number of his works painted before her death in 1642? Louisa. Saskia. By what name did the series of dynastic civil wars fought in England between 1455 and 1485 become known? Wars of the Roses. Yes, the word anorak comes from the language of the people who invented the garment. Which people? Uh, Inuit. Yeah. In which Nottinghamshire town is there a twin-towered cathedral known as the Minster? Pass. Who recorded an album with Tony Bennett named Cheek to Cheek? It won a Grammy for Best Traditional Pop Vocal Album at the 2015 Awards. Kylie Minogue? Lady Gaga. In Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, who, along with the Mad Hatter, tries to push the Dormouse into the teapot? March Hare. Yes. The Spanish-born composer and conductor Pablo Casals was best known as a virtuoso on which stringed instrument? Cello. Yep. After England's quarter-final match of the 66 World Cup, Sir Alf Ramsey called their opponents animals. Which team was he referring to? Portugal. 
Argentina. What is the title of the novel by Aldous Huxley set in the 7th century after Ford, where human beings are hatched in incubators and brought up in communal nurseries? Brave New World. Yep. What does the abbreviation OG stand for in the context of beer strength? Pass. In which French children's song does the singer announce, I will pluck you? Alouette. Yes. Which gas, discovered in 1868 in the solar atmosphere, takes its name from the Greek for the sun? Helium. Yes. Who sang a version of Happy Birthday to You at John F. Kennedy's birthday celebrations in Madison Square Garden in May 1962? Marilyn Monroe. Yep. Which former leading conservative politician who has reinvented himself as a television personality appeared as an eight-year-old in an advert for a blackcurrant cordial drink? Michael Portillo. Yes. Which island, together with the area known as Labrador, voted to enter the Canadian Confederation in 1949 to become Canada's 10th province. Newfoundland. Yes, the scientific name of a common game bird refers to the Faces region around the Black Sea from where these birds are said to have been brought to Europe by the Argonauts. What bird? Pass. What is the name of the historian and chief curator at Historic Royal Palaces who presented a 2016 television series that tells the story of the six wives of Henry VIII? Pass. Which ancient manuscripts include the rules of the community and the war of the sons of light against the sons of darkness? The first of them were found in 1947 by a Bedouin shepherd in the Judean desert. Dead Sea Scrolls. Yes. You have four passes. Chris Lucy Worsley. It was she who presented the stories of the six wives of Henry VIII. Uh, the Argonauts are said to have brought back to Europe the pheasant. OG, in the context of beer strength, stands for original gravity and the town with a twin-towered cathedral, the Nottinghamshire town, is Southwell. You have a total of 26 points. <laughs> so, we have a clear winner. Let's have a look at all of the scores. In fourth place, with 14 points, James. Third place, 21 points, Sarah. Second place, 23 points, Karis. First place, 26 points, Chris. <laughs> and that, of course, means that Chris is tonight's winner and he goes through to the semi-finals. Congratulations to him. And if you would like to be a contender in the next series, do go to our website, bbc.co.uk stroke mastermind, and you can follow us on Twitter at Mastermind Quiz. And do join us again next time for more Masterminds. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.